Good day everyone! I am Kyla May Venus from Grade 12 Generosity and I am here to present to you the ATP and ADP and its cycle. Now, what is ATP? Adenosine triphosphate is the source of energy used in storage at the cellular level. ATP is a nucleotide derivative so it has those three parts you'd see in DNA and RNA nucleotides. Now, what consists of ATP? ATP consists of adenine, ribose, and phosphate groups. Um, ATP consists of one adenine and it is used to make one of the building blocks of the DNA and RNA. And it has one ribose which contains 5 carbon sugar and it is a single ring pentose. It is used by the body to make energy-containing substance adenosine triphosphate. The last one is the phosphate groups. And coming from the word itself, tri, which means three, it consists of three phosphate groups. It is a phosphorus atom bonded to four oxygen atoms. And it is three single bonds and one bonded bond. So this is the chemical structure of adenosine triphosphate or ATP. As you can see on the picture, we have we have the three phosphate groups and the we have one ribose and we have one adenine. Now, what is ADP? Adenosine diphosphate or ADP is a nucleoside phosphate comprised of a ribonucleoside and two phosphate groups. This is the chemical structure of adenosine diphosphate and based on the name itself, di, which means double, it has two phosphate groups. As you can see on the picture, this is the phosphate groups, and this is the ribose, and this is the adenine. Now, let us proceed to ATP and ADP cycle. But first, let us talk about the DNA versus the RNA. You can see on the picture, DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, while, while RNA is ribonucleic acid. And... The DNA consists of double-stranded sugar phosphate, while RNA consists of usually single-stranded sugar phosphate. And the DNA has the base pair, while RNA is single nucleo nucleobase. How do we get ATP? We get ATP through aerobic cellular respiration and anaerobic respiration or fermentation but what is aerobic cellular respiration it might involve oxygen during aerobic cellular respiration glucose reacts with oxygen forming ATP that can be used by the cell and an aerobic respiration or fer fermentation is without oxygen some you some human cells must use fermentation to produce ATP also, in the absence of oxygen, yes, has undergo fermentation. Now, I will explain to you the ATP to ADP cycle with the use of this illustration. As you can see on the upper part, we have the ATP or adenosine triphosphate and it has three phosphate groups. As you can see, the three Ps and in order to convert ATP to ADP, we need to release inorganic phosphate, one inorganic phosphate, and we will also release energy, and this is called exergonic reaction. After that, we can get the ADP. While converting ADP to AD ATP, we need to add energy because adenosine triphosphate has has three phosphate groups that's why we need to add one so we will add energy and we will add 
one inorganic phosphate and this is called endergonic reaction because the energy and the inorganic phosphate will enter to convert ADP to ATP. And ATP has the hydrolysis reaction while ADP has the dehydration reaction. Now, let us talk about hydrolysis reaction. What is hydrolysis reactions? It is the, it is our chemical reactions involving organic compounds. And it uses, it adds water to break down of organic molecules. Hydrolysis reactions are the reverse of condensation reactions. In hydrolysis reactions, a larger molecules form two or more smaller molecules and water is consumed as a reactant. Now, what is dehydration synthesis reaction? Dehydration synthesis reactions can be defined as the chemical reactions in which a water molecule is eliminated from the reactant molecule. The process of combination of two molecules with the elimination of water molecule is called dehydration synthesis. And the term dehydration is used for losing water. That is why it is called dehydration synthesis reaction since we need to lose water in this reaction. We need to lose water in order to form a new compounds. Definitely, a combination of two molecules will form a large compound and water molecules will eliminate and form as a byproduct during the reaction. That's all. Thank you.